Well, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, African-American women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes than white women. And if those numbers weren't surprising enough, the infant mortality rate for black women is more than double the rate for white women. It's a complex problem involving issues that include access to health care and Medicaid, plus policy issues and racism. Now, for the second year, Florida will be one of six states taking part in Black Maternal Health Week. It was created by the advocacy group Black Mamas Alliance to bring awareness to the serious issue of black maternal and infant mortality. Our guest says having access to more holistic forms of care for black women, like using a midwife or doula, can help. Here to share more is midwife Jamara Amani, director of the Southern Birth Justice Network, and young mom Anaya Kendall. Thanks to both of you for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Well, Jamara, let's talk about these numbers. These are startling. When I read them for the first time, I was really shocked. I just didn't know that there was such a serious issue. So talk about that in the work that you do and why it's so important to kind of get this news out and to help solve the problem. Absolutely. A lot of people aren't aware of the numbers, but they and they are shocking, and they've been this way for a long time. Mm. Um, and the numbers don't appear to be getting better. Maternal health in general in the United States is um, pretty shocking in terms of the high rates of maternal mortality, infant mortality, in terms of how we compare to other countries, other developed countries. Even though we spend more in this country on health care, mm. um, our numbers don't bear that out. And for our black women, um, black mamas, the rates are even worse. So black women are dying at four times the rate of white women. Even though um, they have education, they've teased out different things, like if you have access to health care, does that make a difference? If you have advanced degrees, if you have a great income, sure. and the numbers are still really high for black women. But why, why is that? Because you would think that if you took out those who were educated or a different socioeconomic group, mm -hmm. that those numbers would drop, but you're saying it's not. Yeah. Why? So Dr. Michael Liu from the CDC has advanced this theory called the life course perspective, which is the idea that exposure to racism mm -hmm. over the course of someone's life actually predisposes them to greater um, health risks. Um, for example, hypertension. Mm -hmm. um, and we see that show up in pregnancy as preeclampsia, which is one of the number one causes of maternal mortality. So as a black person who thinks about race all the time, who is constantly bombarded um, with instances of discrimination, instances of racism, um, and having to navigate that through a pregnancy, it can raise the levels of cortisol in the, in the bloodstream, which can lead to more health no. conditions. And then we also have um, you know, pre-existing no. health conditions. Because we don't have adequate access to health care in our system, people are going into pregnancy already with diabetes that's untreated, already with mental health issues that are untreated. Um, and so they get maybe pregnancy Medicaid, um, but that only takes care of them during their pregnancy when we really need health care that takes care of people throughout the course of their life so that they can enter a pregnancy in a healthy way. Yeah, and Amara, I see you shaking your head yes. Yeah. So tell us about your experience. We haven't even talked about the midwifery and the doula part of that, and we're going to get to that in a moment, but, mm -hmm. but you were nodding your head to what she was saying. Tell us why. Uh, yes, uh, I agree with her that, you know, healthcare does need to help a little bit more as far as like um, money to fund for doulas because people sometimes get uh, a little confused with like a midwife and a doula. The midwife is basically Lay. like the yeah. lady who sees me and makes sure it's the baby okay and makes sure I'm okay. But my doula is the one who really gives me that support that I need throughout my pregnancy. And a lot of the times, um, especially for someone who's young and single, they don't have that support that they're, you know, they really need during their pregnancy. Um, and even after your pregnancy, after you have the baby is really, is really when it's critical. And that's when your doula really steps in the most to make sure that you know you're not going through postpartum depression, um, you know, if you need anything, you need someone to come and be with the baby for it with you while you can get some rest. It's just small things like that and that's something that healthcare can actually help pay for if doulas were able, were a part of the Medicaid and were a part of, you know, being able to afford a midwife and, you know, if it was a package deal. Like, yeah. I, like I've said before, um, it's kind of like cereal. You wouldn't eat your cereal without milk. Right. So you can't really have your midwife without your doula. Yeah, and, I, and there was a quote too because there was a, you were um, featured and, and interviewed around yes. Mother's Day last year. Yes. They're talking about Black Mama's Day. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you said that really struck me, and I'm gonna read it, and you said, black women are like the axis that 
the earth rotates on. Yes. You said we're the ones who support and keep everything going in society. Everywhere you go, black women are the axis of humanity, raising our children, other people, people's children, doing the grunt work and keeping things going. Yes. Do you feel a pressure as a, as a black woman, as a black mother? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, just from being a single black mother, you know, there's a lot of pressure and a lot that I feel like I have to have on my shoulders, like a lot that's expected, ex expected from me because I have to, one, be a mother, a good mother at that to my son, mm -hmm. which everyone has their opinion about that. But not only that, I still have to be woman and strong enough to make it in the society that I live in, in the culture that I live in. So it's like, it's like a balance of having mm -hmm. to like be strong for the outside world and also be strong for my son at the same time. Wow. Jamar, do you hear that a lot? Oh yes, mm -hmm. definitely. I think the, the pressures that black women are facing um, because of systemic racism and then we also have sexism mm -hmm. um, and then we also have poverty. You know, all these different layers that people are dealing with, each one brings a significant amount of stress. And that's what, you know, shows up in these health disparities. And I think Anaya is right, um, through midwifery care and doula care, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's extra layers of support sure. for those extra layers of oppression. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so that can help to mitigate and kind of balance out some of that stress by having more people that are in your corner and kind of rooting for you. Yeah, which yes. I hear what the doula is really all about. So kind of walk us through, because people watching this may not really be that familiar with midwifery or a midwife or a doula, you know? Sure. So talk to us about what, uh, what each of those roles entails. Sure. Yeah. So I am a midwife, I'm a licensed midwife. Um, and what that means is that I'm a primary care provider for pregnancy, birth and the postpartum time, which is the time after having the, ba the baby. So someone can come to me even, you know, when they get their first pregnancy test and say, hey, I'm pregnant, mm -hmm. I'd like to have you as my midwife. And they come in um, for prenatal care. So I provide complete prenatal care, all of the testing that's associated with that ultrasound. You know, I refer people out for different um, services in the same way that a doctor would. Mm -hmm. I see them monthly in the beginning of their pregnancy and more often as the pregnancy goes on. Um, if they're choosing to have a home birth, I go and do a home visit, kind of get to know the family and build a rapport that way. A lot of midwifery care is about relationship building. Mm. Um, and that, those relationships matter so much for the outcome of the, the pregnancy and the birth. Um, and then when they go into labor, they call me and say, hey, I'm having contractions and I go and um, help them to deliver their baby. Yeah. They call me a baby catcher. <laughs> Which indeed you are, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. I am. You're catching, I catch the babies. Catch. I caught this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. Tell me about your experience, Anaya. Oh my gosh, okay. So my experience having a midwife, I absolutely loved it. Like, I, I first had a doctor, mm -hmm. and every time I went to the doctor's office, I never met my doctor. Mm. So when I came to Jamara, I was about five months four months pregnant mm -hmm. um, and how did you hear about her first of all because that's getting the word out to other people as, yes. as well which is really important it was actually from another midwife mm -hmm. um, you know last year or when I was pregnant it was 2017 we had that hurricane mm -hmm. and all the power went out mm -hmm. and I was at the Starbucks and it was <laughs> another midwife there and um, they overheard me speaking on the phone with someone and I was telling them about how women are so yeah. strong and powerful and they were agreeing no. with me yeah. and I was of course visually pregnant yes. so she was like um you know who do you go to for your doctor and I was like you know I'm actually trying to look for someone that's a little no. bit more hands-on oh. <laughs> I actually was looking for someone that was a little more hands-on so she referred me to Jamara so I went right away I think I probably ah. went the same day or the next day yeah, I think you just showed up at the, <laughs> yeah, I was like, at the hey. office like hey yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be a new client yeah. Yeah, yeah. yes I was like I'm here Super for Jamara cute. someone told me to come and she just she welcomed me with open arms. She was like, yes, I'd be more than happy to. And we just kind of bonded um, right off the rip. Mm -hmm. um, and it just from there, it was just something beautiful. You know, her always being there for me while I was pregnant. Yeah. He's like, yes. He's agreeing with you, girl. He was co yes. <laughs> yes. yes, mama. Yes. Well, and I, I think what's something that's important to point out, too, because, you know, I asked you, a lot of folks say, oh, having a home birth, that's, that's dangerous. Or what if there's a complication? But you told me what? So yes, complications yeah. do arise. Yeah. They're rare, but it does happen. Um, midwives, the way that um, our practice is set up is that we are allowed to care for low risk and normal pregnancies. Um, and if anything changes where it becomes high risk, then we do have relationships with doctors where we will refer out 
to an obstetrician mm -hmm. if, or another specialist if the need arises. Mm -hmm. So um, what I do is I work very closely with my clients to stay healthy. We focus a lot on nutrition, on emotional and mental health, yes. um, a lot on just, you know, like I said, building that bond and getting to a deeper place mm -hmm. around their pregnancy journey. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it is, is um, restoring people's sense of confidence and power back mm -hmm. in their own bodies. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, especially as women, we're disconnected sure. from our bodies. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so the, the, what midwives have done over lots of, I mean, people have been birthing with midwives since the beginning of time, time right? Yeah. And so what midwives have done is to really disrupt that narrative of, um, of disempowerment and tell women like you are powerful you can do this you can choose the way you want to do this absolutely mm -hmm. it's right. your body it's yeah. your choice and, and you're you're young and you're yes. a single mom mm -hmm. so there wasn't a whole lot of support was there i mean I, I i read that you said the birth father really wasn't around and the, right. the only one in your family really supporting was your grandma right mm -hmm. yes yeah. yes for that mental like emotional support i really leaned to my grandmother the most um she was always there to, you know, like give me like her experience um, as raising her children. <laughs> with <laughs> it's because he sees himself. But, yeah, yeah. But you know, with giving me support, with like you know, telling me her experience from raising her children. Yeah. Um, the things she did, getting government assistance, and yeah. you know, she's a very God-fearing woman, so she would always pray for me. But and you needed that support, and, and definitely all women need that support. Before we go, I want to talk about the um, legislative part of this. What is it that you're working on? So um, I brought this policy guide. This is called Advancing Holistic Maternal Care for Black Women Through Policy. Um, and this is through Black Mamas Matter Alliance, which you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. which is the founder of Black Maternal Health Week. Mm -hmm. So my organization, Southern Birth Justice Network, we're a kindred partner with Black Mamas Matter Alliance. And what we're really trying to do is raise awareness about black maternal mortality um, and really push this issue at the state level um, in Tallahassee mm -hmm. and also nationally. I was in D.C. on Tuesday with um, Congresswoman Adams and Congresswoman Underwood, and they are launching a Black Maternal Health Caucus where there are going to be Congress people specifically focused on this issue and creating legislation policies to support mm -hmm. more access to midwives, more access to doulas. And doulas we didn't really get to, but yeah. doulas are the uh, professional labor support. Mm -hmm. They are the birth coaches. Mm -hmm. They work with someone through their pregnancy and through their their labor to have um, a birth that is theirs that they really want to have by creating a birth plan and upholding that whether that's in a hospital a birth center or a home birth yeah so all of this um, really needs more support we need yeah. all of this paid for um, through Medicaid and for there to be more doulas and more yeah. midwives that are culturally based and community based to provide this holistic care to black mamas. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the work Thank you're doing. You. It was great Thank to meet you, so you much and to for have you on the show today. Yes. And I am your beautiful baby boy, Thank Jameer. You. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. Great to have both of you with us as well. And for more on Black Maternal Health Week and to find local resources, visit Southern Birth Justice Network, SouthernBirthJustice.org. We'll also have the link for you on our Facebook page at yourself FL.